Steve, I'm just going to drop yours a tiny bit if that's all right, mate. Says the man with the giant red microphone. <laughs> You go. No, you go. Uh, He's well, going to say something first, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're right. Okay. So looking over there. Oh, I think I'll. Kind they of they this might. Way. They might have a different view. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll be we'll be democratic and go down the centre. Okay. Nothing if not centrist. Uh, well, look, it is um, very poignant. Uh, to be here with the, the Foreign Minister and to see the work that uh, our Australian trainers are doing uh, in training Ukrainian soldiers. It's, it's really important to understand that this is a citizen army which is in place now in Ukraine. Uh, the people that we're seeing who are being trained uh, have come from normal jobs throughout their country, uh, have volunteered in order to defend their country and what they face is intense danger when they go home. And the training that Australians are providing are going to help make them safer. It will save lives and it will make an incredible contribution to enabling Ukraine to stay in this fight uh, for as long as possible so that they are able to resolve this conflict on Ukraine's terms, which is so important for the world. It really is, and it very much goes to Australia's national interests. I think Penny and I have a, an intense sense of pride uh, about what our Australian servicemen and women are doing here, um, and they are making a real difference uh, to what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, thanks, Richard. Look, uh, we've spoken a lot in Australia about what Ukraine means to us in Australia and means to the world uh, community. Uh, and it is a, a fight uh, that is about protecting the rules that have protected us for uh, many decades. Uh, and it is a fight against an illegal and immoral uh, war being waged by Mr Putin. Uh, and 
I've had moving moments before talking about this issue and I've met with members of the Australian uh, Ukrainian community uh, but to be here uh, and to speak with uh, those brave Ukrainians who have come here in order to learn better how to defend their country uh, is profoundly humbling uh, and I want to acknowledge them and I want to acknowledge, as Richard has, the Australians who are here working with others uh, to better prepare and train these brave men and women. Thank you. Um, since your last big announcement on military aid back in October, your counterpart here in the UK has made four big announcements, including sending tanks to Ukraine. Is Australia dragging the train on military aid? Uh, I don't think anyone would say that of the contribution that Australia has made. Um, and there's an ongoing question of, of balancing the support that we provide Ukraine um, and ensuring that we maintain um, our own capabilities in, in Australia uh, for our own national purposes. But it's worth remembering that Australia is one of the largest non-NATO contributors to the effort in Ukraine. Uh, and in all the meetings that we've had, wherever we go, uh, there is an incredible sense of gratitude uh, from countries in Europe, uh, but from Ukraine itself for the contributions that Australia is making. Now, we know this is going to be a prolonged conflict. Um, we will continue to assess uh, what we need to do to make sure that we stand with Ukraine, but be sure that that is what we will do, and obviously the training effort that you're seeing here today is part of that. Well, again, we will continually uh, assess the contribution that we make. We'll, make, we'll keep the dialogue going with Ukraine. Um, but if you take a step back and look at the overall contribution that we have uh, made and have been making, and we'll continue to do it, uh, you know, we stand as one of the largest non-NATO contributors to, the, to supporting Ukraine, uh, and that should be a source of pride for all Australians. Uh, we will continue to have a, uh, an assessment about how we can best support Ukraine. Now, now right now, um, the, the, the support that's making a real difference is what you are seeing around us right here. I mean, just think about the soldiers who are being trained. Think about the environment that they're going to go into in the near future. Think about the difference uh, that is being made for them by the skills and the proficiency which is being uh, passed on to them by the Australian trainers. That is a huge contribution and that is our focus right now. Will Australian trainers continue to be part of this revolution? Uh, we're not putting a time frame on it, it's a, it's a completely fair question and obviously we're not putting a time frame on it because you can't put a time frame on, on the conflict. Um, uh, and. To be frank, we're being coy about that for a whole lot of um, in, important reasons. Uh, but I think in, in, in the general sense, we will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes, and we understand that this is going to be a protracted conflict. And Minister, of the 90 million articles that have been allocated, how many actually in Ukraine? Are they still making their way there, those clusters? Yeah, well, again, we're not, we're not talking about numbers um, publicly for, again, for operational reasons, but the point I would make about the delivery of the Bushmasters is that the, um, the, the, the schedule of delivery is on target. Did you, did, you, did you ever think that you would be in a position of sending Australian Army personnel to train people in World War One tactics, trench warfare? <laughs> uh, well, it, 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 tactics have evolved and, and I think one of the things we'd, we'd want to point out, and you can see it with, with what we're witnessing today, um, they're, they're very sophisticated training which is underway um, but but I guess the, the the kind of import of your question is, is speaks to the brutality of the conflict that these people are about to go back to and that and that's right um, you know it, it is brutal uh, and, and and those who are being trained here now in the very near future are going to find themselves um, in, in a very uh, dangerous and, and, and brutal environment and the answer to your question is no uh, I, I wouldn't have imagined that um, and I think when you, when you speak to the, the, the Australians who are doing this training I'm not sure they would have either but it, but in speaking to them what's really clear um, 
is, is the sense of moment that they had about what they're doing, um, about the seriousness of, of, of this and the difference that they're making. And, and it's impossible not to feel, you know, a real sense of pride about that. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Sorry, Sorry, for the stuff. Yeah. When will Australia be ambassador to Ukraine back in Kiev? Every other major Western nation has functioning embassies now in Kiev. Yes. Well, look, uh, we, we uh, considered this very carefully, uh, looked at uh, the range of security issues, uh, and the decision uh, at the moment is that we will continue uh, to provide uh, assistance uh, from, um, I think it's Poland. Uh, obviously, that we'll, we'll continue to review that, uh, but the safety of Australian personnel obviously is the priority we have to uh, apply to that decision. Thank you. Thank you.